Welcome to GRIT, the Real Estate Growth Mindset Podcast, hosted by Brian Charlesworth, founder of Sisu. Sisu provides growth automation software for real estate. You'll hear stories from real estate thought and technology leaders, team owners, and brokers on how they grew their business in a rapidly changing industry. You'll learn how to transform your brokerage and teams into a high-performing and analytics-driven business so you have a new, durable, competitive advantage against disruption in your market. So let's get right into it. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to The Grit Podcast. I'm Brian Charlesworth. I'm the founder of CSU and your host of the show. And excited to be here today with Corey Prince out of Canada. Corey, welcome to the show. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate it, man. So Corey is the co-founder of Countrywide Real Estate Group up in Canada, started his career back in 2010. Let's dive back to that, Corey. How and why did you get into real estate? That's a funny story. So I've sold everything, diamonds, gym memberships, you know, pretty much. What's that? Have you sold solar? I have not sold solar. Solar is not huge in where I live in Canada, but I have not. No. Oh, okay. Um, and I was selling, what was I did selling? You, I was se- do door-to-door sales. I guess that's another way of asking that question. I did not, no. No, I never okay. did door-to-door. Yeah. Okay. So when I first, I was living in downtown Vancouver in British Columbia in Canada, where the business is primarily focused. And I had a friend, I was at a cocktail party one time and I was selling cars at the time. And I was, you know, 22, 21, something like that. And he says, well, if it seems like you have an aptitude for sales or it seems like you're decent at it, why are you selling something for 20,000 when you can sell something for 20 million? Why don't you get into real estate? And it like drinking a cocktail, I was like, that's a not bad idea. And over the course of the next six months, I got my license and yeah, that was 2010 and hit the ground running and eventually formed a team and realized the missing pieces that I needed and was trying to create spreadsheets to basically accomplish what Sisu does. And then when I learned about Sisu and realized it was very much like an API forward company, I'm like, I think I need to figure out a way to tie into this with my systems. And here we are, right? Cool. Cool. So how long have you been on Sisu now? Sisu, I dabbled in it back in like 2018 or 20. 17, like quite early on, but I just didn't have the integration with the CRM I was using at the time that it really made sense. So I left for a period of time. And then when I reenacted or re-signed up with uh, Chime, they were starting to work on a basic two-way integration with a bridge page and all that with Chime. And I was like, okay, I know this is going to improve. So let's lock into it now. And then I've been with them ever since when Premier was offered a little bit later on, I signed up for that as well. Okay. So it wouldn't have been 17 because that was before we had anything in the market. But when was 17, 19, 18, middle, 19? Middle, middle of 18, we released an app and beginning of 19, we released the platform. So yeah, maybe, maybe late 18, early 19. So we were really sales performance back then. It was very early on, very, very early on. You guys didn't have many of the integrations you have now. You had some, but it was mostly using some of the other connector, like the Zapiers and yeah. stuff like that to hook it together, right? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. So tell us a little bit about your business. Well, before we do that, let's talk about the Canadian market. So sure. it's different up there. Yeah. Um, like you, you hear all these things, all these people telling you how to grow your business And you don't have Zillow up there, right? Uh, Zillow exists in our markets, but it doesn't sell leads. It's not a real competitor. They do have some SEO and they do have some traffic, but they're not, they're nothing like they are in the United States. Yeah. The market is, it's, it's a more conservative banking industry. So our mortgage rules are much more conservative. In fact, back in 2016 or 2017, I forget what year it was, they implemented something called a mortgage stress test. And the mortgage stress test was, if you're going to qualify for a mortgage, you'd essentially have to qual. and it was less than 20% down. So what they call a high ratio mortgage, yeah. they would ensure that you qualified for whatever the rate was plus 2% as a cushion. So it did limit your buying power, particularly in expensive markets like Toronto or Vancouver, a lot because people are buying sort of the top of their range. So it's much more conservative. It's harder to get your foot in the door in like an expensive market. And anything less than 20% down on a mortgage, it has to be insured by an insurance backer of the entire country. So all the mortgages are insured that are under 20% down. So it's more challenging to get into the market, but it's a really solid conservative lending environment. So there hasn't been really huge drops. There's been dips, but there's never been anything like a 2008 mortgage crash in the States, right? Okay. So while we're speaking about mortgages, tell me about interest rates up there. What's happened in that world? 
that's like the most common thing on our team that we get of people saying, how do I deal with this objection is I'm going to wait because the interest rates are too high. And when the interest rates were 1.5%, people, customers said the same thing. So it's like, did they get down to 1.5%? I actually know of somebody that had a 1.32 five-year fixed that wow. they're still locked into. And that's just probably not ever coming back. You know, historically, five or 6% is actually really good if you track it over 30, 40, 50 years, right? right. So right now we're basically the same as, as America as far as the interest rates. They're very similar. But when the interest rates and the media is talking about the interest is going up or the rates are going up, people just sit on the sidelines and wait for them to go down or wait for the interest to be better. And then everybody sort of mass tries to buy at the same time and the property prices go up. So it's like, if they follow like sheep, they're not going to have an advantage on either side. You know what I mean? Well, we had this period of, geez, at least six years where interest rates just kept dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. Yeah, which, us too. Which made it really easy for the mortgage lenders, right? It also made it a really, I would say, like artificial real estate market, right? Where people felt like, oh yeah, I need to buy like free money, right? I know my daughter bought five houses just because she could, right? She could get qualified and she could get free money. Why not do it, right? I mean, if you're at those types of interest rates, it's easy to make money, more money than your payments on a rental, right? Yeah. So, okay, good. So up in Canada now, things are selling, the market's slow, the market's good. Probably different throughout Canada as it is the US, but tell me your perspective of that. Yeah, like our major market is the lower mainland, which is about an hour to an hour and a half drive surrounding Vancouver, British Columbia, which is where the 2010 Olympics were, just to give people like a frame of reference. So that's our major market. It's quite expensive on average for what you get. It's a very desirable place. It's bordered by oceans to the west and mountains to the north. So there's only so much land and the only direction you can go is east away from the water. So there's less transactional volume year over year but there's still thousands of transactions happening. So it's when I had a, a managing broker tell me very early in my career, people were talking about the market being up or being down and whether they were experiencing the kind of sales they wanted. And that managing broker, whose name was Corey, he said, unless you have a hundred percent market share, the market doesn't matter. There's thousands of deals out there. Go get your 50 or 10 or five a month, whatever it is. And uh, I've always remembered that even from when I first started in the business. So the markets, it's the perception of it that it's more challenging for buyers and sellers, but there's around the same amount of transactions happening anyway. So you just need to learn how to have those conversations, right? I love that you said that. I, I think that's great advice. And I love that you've held on to that because the market really is what you think it is, right? Yeah. The market is right now. I know of a lot of people that are growing way beyond where they were last year. And then I know a lot of people that aren't you know, that are staying kind of the same. And then there's also those people who are getting out of the industry now. And it's not that there aren't houses selling. It's that you actually have to do the work, right? Yeah. More work than you used to have to do by a lot. Like you actually have to be very consistent and disciplined with your prospecting. When before you might have 20 or 30 deals sort of fall into your lap per year. And then, yeah. yeah. And, and that's a good life. That's great. But it's not repeatable unless the market is like that, right? So if people do get weeded out, people that have been in the business a long time that have made really good money for five or 10 or 15 years, a lot of them are phoning me and asking about opportunities about being on a team because they, yeah. they can take the cost away. They can plug into a Ferrari and they can just decide how fast they want to drive it based on how much work they do. And we provide triple line power dialers. We provide everything. Essentially, they just have to work. And if they work, they can make hundreds of thousands of dollars with very low overhead, right? It's a no brainer. Yep. Totally agree. I've been saying for a long time now, teams are the future of the industry. And now it's actually happening where people know they need to be on teams or brokerages are starting to operate like teams to add the value. Otherwise, those brokerages will be disappearing as will a lot of solo agents. Okay. So let's talk about teams and real estate and like what is it about teams that make such a difference like why is somebody wanting to come to your team if they've been in the business for a long time now like 
I find that the competitive advantage of a team is usually having like specialists in each role. So for instance, I was an above average agent, but I'm not the greatest agent ever. And I'll fully admit that. But what I did find in being in production for eight years before I got out about four or five years ago was that I really enjoyed the architecture and the systems to put together lead generation and provide opportunities for agents. That's like really what my passion is. And I really like it. So I've realized that's my wheelhouse. If I can do that 80% of the time, and then I can partner with somebody who's their wheelhouse is sales and sales training, which my business partner, Zaya, which you met when we were in Salt Lake City in April, that's his wheelhouse. So together, we basically can focus on the things that we like, number one, and that we're like really exceptional at. And a single agent, no matter how good they are in any of those, is not going to compete with me leaning all the way in and tripling down on that skill. And I think Zaya doing the same. So the best lead generation we've seen for our agents so far, like for people trying to join the team, is the agents on our team talking about us to other team or to other agents. Yeah. And we, I'll get somebody to reach out and they'll say, oh, you know, X, Y, Z or John or whoever said, yeah, I, to give you a call. And I get on the phone with them and I find out they've been licensed for seven years. They experienced really good sales over those seven years, maybe did 30 deals last year. And then this year they've done two. And their expenses are probably not in line with what two deals is going to fill if right. they've been doing real estate deals for seven years. Right. So they see the success and the proof of concept with the agents that are on our team already, whether they're new or whether they're experienced, and they just want to have a conversation, which it's great. Those conversations are where all our business comes from, right? So it's, it's awesome. So agents are attracted to you. Why do you think that is? Why do you think they're attracted? You mentioned because your agents are having success, but is there something else? One of the things that's really powerful for us is we're CSU coaching clients. So I rely on some of the training to be done by Justin. So on Mondays and Fridays at 11 a.m. our time, PST, he gets on there and for an hour, he sort of lines them up for the week on Monday and then holds them accountable on Friday. And that really dovetails really well into our training and our winner circle meetings, our morning huddles, if you will, as well. And it gives them like a real accountability schedule. And it enforces that they have to, they don't have to do the things they say they're going to do, but they're going to be publicly made to declare it. Yeah. So they'll say, okay, I want to do a hundred conversations and this many appointments this week. Yeah. And then during the meetings, they have to basically say whether they're on pace or whether they're not. And if you say you're not on pace enough time, that's painful. And you're doing it around people that are your peers. And maybe those peers are doing well. And nobody wants to feel like they're not performing. So it, it causes people to rise up a bit more than if they're just secretly not being successful on their own, right? Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, I don't think Justin Time has ever come up on one of my podcasts before. So Justin Time is something we created because Justin Nelson, who works very closely with us, he is Springs team leader of her Davis County office and used to be a Tony Robbins speaker and is a bundle of energy and also really drives a very powerful culture here. I don't think I've ever seen a culture on a team quite like his. So we had so many people say to us, well, how do I get a Justin? And so we created Justin time so that all of you can get a Justin on yeah. a Monday and Friday. And it sounds like you're leveraging him as one of your recruiting vehicles. <laughs> Yeah. Like I use him for our team. He's part of our team calendar. So everybody on the team has access and they attend as much as they can. A lot of them attend quite frequently. And then prior to somebody even being on our team, if I think it makes sense to warrant inviting them to one of those just in time meetings to show them what our performance coach will show them, yeah. that is a really good lead into like actual one of our team meetings and then a zoom call to really have a one-on-one -on -one with them to see if we want to proceed to the next steps. So it's just a great feeder that shows yeah. a lot of value and it requires nothing on my end except for paying a bill, which is pretty affordable compared to with the value that I feel like we get. So it's good. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. I love to hear that. So thank you for sharing. So I want to talk for a minute because as I read your bio and stuff, it seems like you guys have created something like, do you have some sort of software that you've created for people's ability to search for homes that have, or listings? I think it's maybe specific to listings that have, that are for sale, have sold, or are rentals. Tell, tell me more about that. Sure. So our brand is Countrywide Real Estate Group. And that brand name is chosen very specifically to mean countrywide for Canada. 
So okay. coast to coast in Canada. So I've negotiated a national data feed with a number of real estate boards. So I have every MLS listing in all of Canada on the website. Wow. And I have a large portion of the sold data for all the major markets also available on the website. So there's almost 400,000 sold listings in that database, as well as I think 250 or 300,000 active listings at any given time. And what we do is in our markets where a lot of people sign up, but we've got pretty good SEO. So they sign up all over the country. If I can't service them as a team because they're not in our major market through our brokerage EXP and through CSU, I send them off as a referral agent and track that in CSU, whether they're converting them or not, and just count it towards the overall volume of the company. Yeah. Okay. So you're driving a lot of referral business because of this software platform. Is that right? Yeah. Like it's, we'd like to do those deals in-house, but we just don't have teams in all the major markets. We have them in a couple in BC, but that's the overall vision is to find those partners who we think are going to do really well. The systems there, our database is very large. It's the biggest one in Canada, as far as I know, with leads. And uh, yeah, we're just, we do a bunch of referral business, but the goal will be to be that will be the countrywide brand in each market. But right now it's just predominantly in BC and British Columbia on the West Coast. So it sounds like you have a goal to expand and do expansion teams across all of Canada. Is that correct? If you've been enjoying Grit, please help us continue to grow the channel by leaving a five-star review and sharing it with a friend. Now back to Grit. Absolutely. Starting with where we are now. And then next will be probably Edmonton, Calgary, Toronto, those major markets and onwards. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Yeah. So you guys also let people compare home values through this? Yeah. So the sold data that we have is not something that's publicly available. You have to have a real estate license to log in and actually see sold data. So what we do is The automatic sold valuations that you'll find or the property valuations you'll find on websites don't work very well in Canada because the privacy laws don't allow that data to be available outside of a privacy wall or a password protected wall. So to see sold data on our site across Canada, you have to be able to create an account. You can see active listings without an account to a certain extent, but you can't see sold data. So we'll allow somebody to request a valuation. And what we found is it would turn out such an unrealistic price because the data was harvested from a place that's not super accurate. What we do is we'll just provide full CMAs or full appraisals for free. So if somebody pushes that button on our site, puts in their address and clicks go, one of the agents will reach out and just literally have a quick chat with them, email it over, and we just do it on mass for free. And it, it offers a lot of value. So people don't feel like we're just trying to like squeeze a deal out of them. If they want to know the value of their house, we'll just provide it accurately. And then we'll make it even more accurate if they let us see it in person, of course. Right. So are there other software platforms up there that are doing CMAs? It's usually just an individual agent doing it themselves through their own yeah. MLS. That's predominantly yeah. what it is. Yeah. Ours integrated into our, our system. It's so quick. Like I can do a CMA on a property in less than five minutes. It's just a very standardized way to do it. And it sends them a link where they can view it on our website, which is really nice. And then they can go back and request a new one if it's been a year or two. Or if they ask me, they say, look, I like knowing this, but I'm not going to sell for five years. Could I get one of these once a year? I can just set it up to create like that and they don't have to feel like they're bothering us, right? Provides a lot of value for people on the site. So this seems like something, I mean, you do have the Zestimate from Zillow in the US, but this seems like something that that everybody who owns a home would want access to. Do people pay you for this? No, we, we could occasionally get people that will offer to pay because they feel bad about like taking our time to create an appraisal, but this is our business. So like there's a book that I read a long time ago called The Go-Giver by Bob Berg, and it talks about the law of value. There's five laws of stratospheric success, and the law of value is giving more in value than you ever take in payment. And that's like one of the tenets of our company. And if you do that with prospective customers over time, over months or over years, When the time comes for them to consider selling or buying a property, they're going to come to you. If you've been pouring into them with no expectation of a return, the retention rate on that's really high. And then the referral rate's extremely high too, because they're like, wow, 
this team did all this for a two year period. I didn't make any, they didn't make any money off of me. And then they did a deal and they were actually exceptional. They did really well. So we're trying to give more in value than we take in payment. That's kind of the, the gist of it. I was actually listening to Tony Robbins this morning and he said something very similar to that. I'm trying to think exactly how he worded it, but he basically said over the next five years, those who bring the most value in their industry will completely dominate the industry. So just speaking about, it's all about bringing value, right? So many times we want something without bringing value. If you're not bringing value, people don't have no reason to work with you. Yeah. Like nobody cares what you know until they know that you care. Yeah. Right. You could be the greatest, you'd be the most proficient agent at negotiating listings, whatever it is, negotiating deals. But if the people that you're talking to as prospective clients don't think you care about them and don't think you're going to put their needs above your own, they won't do business with you. I think it's that simple. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm still intrigued by this because it seems like you've kind of gone over the top here. Like how many developers did you have developed this and how long did it take you? How much money have you invested? (laughs) I've got a lot of questions about this. (laughs) Like total? I've never really told numbers. It's over seven figures total for the entire system, for sure. Like what from start to finish. And I played with iterations of other systems, which we abandoned because they just weren't a good fit or the way they would tie into data didn't work. So yeah, it's been a 13 year journey ever since I got licensed. And it's in the very beginning, when I first got licensed, I was living in a province in British Columbia that I wasn't from, no family or anybody there. I didn't have any friends when I moved there. So I knew very early on from getting licensed, I wasn't going to have a lot of friends and a lot of family wanting to do business. So I wanted to fill my pipeline. And the way I did that was I started learning Google ads back when it was called Google AdWords, Facebook, Instagram, all these online lead generation systems. And in doing so as an agent, I would do that at night while I'd be in production during the day. I realized that like data analytics and data science is actually like what I'm interested in more yeah. than selling real estate. Yeah. And fortunately, I've been able to partner with people that very much like selling real estate more than data analytics. And together, we make a good uh, like synergistic combo, right? So yeah, I don't know if that answers your question. A lot of money, a lot of time and a lot of headaches. And now it's, it does pretty well but I'm always optimizing it day by day, right? Yeah, so you just said, Corey, you said, I'm in business. Like, yes, you are in the real estate business, but you just said your passion is data analytics. Yeah. And you've built a company, you've spent seven figures building a company or a technology, I should say, maybe not necessarily a company, but a technology (laughs) that brings value to all of Canada. I would think there's a way for you to monetize on that. That has been in my wheelhouse for many years. And right now I'm focusing on how to add a ton of value to like the team members and the partners on the team, the agents. And a lot of them have been around since the beginning, like in the very, very beginning, they signed up. And we're thinking of like equity positions where they get ownership and they get a piece of it as it grows. And who knows, who knows where it's going to go eventually. But right now it's a very high functioning team which scales really well. So we're, like I said, we'll look to add people in the rest of Canada at some point, but right now just heavily focused on the lower mainland. We've got as many agents licensed within an hour and a half drive of our major market that are in the entire state of Utah. That's how many agents are in that market. And that's the second biggest market in Canada. Toronto's the bigger market. How many agents is that? 20,000. 20,000. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then I think the Toronto board has 40 or 50,000. I don't remember the number, but it's, it's a lot. And that's just in Metro Toronto, like within the greater Toronto area. So they're very big boards. And with us, we're not looking for every agent because not every agent wants to be on a team, but the ones that are willing to have a conversation about it and get on a Zoom call, once I show them under the hood a little bit and talk about what the benefits are, they start thinking about how much money they'll net and how many problems will take away. And then a lot of them get pretty excited when we put them through the process and realize they just have to pick up the phone, do the deal and hand off the paperwork and have somebody else do it. Right. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So you said you're using Chime and Sisu. Are there any, and this technology that you built, which is actually called Countrywide, is that right? Countrywide Real Estate Group is where that's all founded. Yeah. Okay. Are you using any other technologies or is, is that your tech stack? The two main ones are Chime. 
Sisu, and then we're EXP. We're brokered by EXP. So Skyslope is the third one, which yeah. Chime and Sisu work really well because it goes into Sisu from Chime. And it goes from Chime to, or from Sisu, sorry, to Skyslope. So you never have to input the data. Once they sign up on the website, it's, it just pushes over to where it needs to go. Those are the main ones. I use some other stuff for mailers like Mailbox Power. Send out cards is another one that America has. Actually, I think they're based out of Utah, ironically, to send out mailers, brownies, yeah. birthday cards, things like that. Yeah. So you've been to a Sisu Mastery and we had one this week. Yeah. And you know how it is at Sisu Mastery. A lot of new teams to Sisu come in and it's amazing how their eyes grow and get bigger as they realize that they don't need to enter the same data into their CRM and then into Sisu and then into a, you know, a Trello and then into a sky slope and that, you know, just streamlining that process. So there's no duplicate entry. Yeah. Can save you an hour or two per transaction. So now you start talking about doing a thousand transactions a year how much money have you actually saved? Yeah, I think I think Zach actually said it best, or maybe it's in one of your help sections. It says, one of the articles, it says, stuff doesn't go into Sisu, it runs through Sisu. And yeah. that's very much how we do it. It starts at Chime, goes into Sisu, and then goes through. And the basic functions of our business are filling out forms, which have the key dates, which populate the dashboards, which do everything. And then you never have to wonder what your data, the integrity of the data is. The way the forms are built, if it's a required field, they have to fill it out to submit the form. Therefore, we have that data point. Therefore, it shows the reporting. Therefore, we can do the one-on-ones and show agents where they need to improve and how to do it. And then it's up to them. You know, They say they want to make X amount of money. You shine up and hold up a mirror and say, did you do it? Or like, did you live up to your commitment? And if they didn't, do you want to recommit? And you just show them a path over the next seven days and they jump on or they jump off, right? It's yeah. uh, it's all up to them. Yeah. So a couple more questions before I let you go here. So if you were to give advice to our listeners, like what is the most important thing someone should be doing in this real estate market, which it sounds like the market in Canada is very similar to the market in the United States, but what should somebody be doing today so that they can grow their business in this market instead of having their business decline? I'd say there's in our company, we call it green zone, yellow zone, and red zone activities. So green zone activities are revenue generating activities that pay the bills for a realtor. So prospecting for new clients, listing appointments, negotiating deals. These are really the high value open houses, the high value things that are going to generate business. Do that 75 or 80% of the time. Anything else that doesn't fit into those four or five things delegate to an assistant or delegate to a virtual assistant or something like that, that you can pay a fraction of what your hourly rate could be. If you're a realtor and you're productive, you probably can make four or $500 an hour or more on average. But if you're doing something, you can pay a VA six bucks an hour to do. You might like doing it. It might give you like a feeling of satisfaction, but it's tripping over dollars to pick up nickels in my opinion. Yeah, that's great. That's great advice. Yeah. I see that all the time. And I think I think part of it is people may want to use an excuse, use it as an excuse, right? Like, oh, I, I don't really want to prospect. I know that's where I make my money, but I don't really enjoy prospecting. So rather than prospect, I'm just going to follow up and talk to my people that are under contract. And, you know, we'll get those three closed this month. And then next month I'll close nothing because I'm just focused on getting those three closed. <laughs> And yeah. then they're on that roller coaster, right? So, so that's great advice. Just focus all of your time on things in the green zone, which is the money making zone. I love yeah. that. Yeah, my my partner, my business partner, the director of sales, Zaya, he says you don't want a heartbeat business. Heartbeat business is that roller coaster ride, right? Yeah. And the way you prevent that is you prospect and you fill a pipeline full of 20 or 30 people that are in the car or listings, and you can transact four or five of those a month and have a great life. If you don't have 20 or 30 people in your pipeline and adding new ones each week, you're going to struggle. You just are. Yep. yep. We've all seen it. Changing the topic off of real estate a little bit, being from Canada, where is it you like to vacation? Anywhere sunny and warm. <laughs> What would that be? Where's your favorite place to go? Uh, I like Mexico. My wife just got married in May. My wife's Polish. So we're going to go visit Poland next year, hopefully. I've been to Europe, but I've never been to Poland. So that'll be cool. I don't think Um, Poland's warm though, right? 
And no, not it's like in the summer it'll be fine, but we'll go there in the summer for sure. Some uh, <laughs> Poland has a winter like we do for sure. Yeah, we're like very similar weather to like Colorado. Yeah. Or Utah. Probably Utah. Utah's pretty similar yeah. too, right? Yeah. yeah. So I like I like Mexico. I like, you know, Thailand. I like Hawaii. I like anywhere that you can get on a jet ski and come back and have a margarita when you're on vacation. That's what I like. Anything else you'd like to share before we wrap up today? Yeah, like I, I just appreciate the opportunity to have a chat. It's been since April. I think uh, in April is when I met you in person for the CSU Mastery. So really, really awesome to see you again. And I've been in this business 13 years, which is not a really, really long time compared to some. But I've learned that it's so much better to collaborate than it is to be super competitive. So agents who want to reach out, literally no potential to join my team at all. I'll get on the phone. I'll extend a text back and forth. I feel like it's so rewarding when somebody does really well because of a little tweak or a little like reminder that I can give them. Even if I have no chance to make any money off of them professionally, I feel like that's like my purpose these days. So I really, I'd be, I'd be open to that if anybody wants to reach out. So if somebody wants to reach out, Corey, what's the best way to get a hold of you? There's a couple of ways. I'm on LinkedIn, Corey, K-O-R-Y, last name Prince, first and last name. I'm not on there as much as, let's say, Facebook Messenger or my email directly. I'll give it to you as well as just Corey. K-O-R-Y at countrywide real estate.ca. So Corey at countrywide real estate.ca. Okay. Corey, thanks for joining us on the show today. To all of our listeners, thanks for joining us on another episode. And it's it's interesting for me to see how you do business in Canada versus the way we do here. And there are so many similarities, yet you've got this tech platform that has me really intrigued. So again, thank you for joining me, Corey. Great spending time with you again. And to all of our listeners, we'll catch you next week on next week's episode. Thanks again for joining us today. For sure. Thanks so much, man. Thank you for joining us on our podcast. If you have an interest in a free seven-day trial of Sisu, go to sisu.co, S-I-S-U dot C-O. Make sure that you use the coupon code GRIT, that's G-R-I-T, to waive all your set of fees and receive a 10% discount on your subscription. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast and want to subscribe, search GRIT, the real estate growth mindset on iTunes, Spotify, or Podbean. And with that, we'll catch you next time. Take care.